Good. Yep. So it is, uh, what is today? February 13th. It's February 13th. JST meeting. Um, Alice is ill. He was going to chair this meeting. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and chair. And I, I did check with council because. Um, because Al, you had brought up the last meeting, the question of whether that was an appropriate thing. And um, what council, council said that's fine. In fact, that there's been periods where council members have chaired consistently for some months. It's just in the long term, we're not supposed to be dominating the, the work of the committee or whatever. It's okay, we won't let you. <laughs> yeah, I don't think there's too much problems with that. So anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and share the um, And so let's review the minutes, or I mean, let's review the agenda <coughs> first. Um, is there anything? Um, one thing I was going to do is under the working group plans, give each group 20 minutes. Um, if some of the early groups use less than 20, we will, you know, we just want to make sure everybody has an opportunity. Uh, each group has an opportunity, and um, let's see. So, is there any other changes to the uh, agenda? Yeah. Um, I'm just wondering if, if, at some point, we couldn't discuss having uh, a, a, for a portion of, of the meeting or uh, a, a police a representative from the police department. I talked to two police officers, and they. Both said that they felt, you know, they felt that it was, uh, they wanted to be part of it, and they thought maybe the officer on duty could come for 15 minutes, 20 minutes, or something to answer questions or to give input. Uh, it seems sort of a, a, a something that's lacking, where that we don't get any input from them. I know people talk to the chief and all that, but, uh, but there, I think we're missing opportunities to. Get answers to questions that might be might facilitate our, our work. Having do, do we want to have a little discussion? Yeah, that's that? what I'm asking. You want to throw it on the agenda? Okay. Yeah, that's new business. Why don't we put it under new business? <coughs> Sorry, Alice. Yeah, just a quick. If we have, assuming we have time at the end, I just yeah. want to do an update about. Um, how we get our packets together for the meeting and how we're distributing them. And like they're on the web page now, does everybody know that? So, yeah. <laughs> okay. So it won't take long. Okay. okay. Regarding packets. Okay. And thank you, Pat, for putting the packet together. It's a bit of work, actually. So, mm -hmm. yeah. um, okay. Uh, so let's see. Um, just to review, let's see. Um, a, a reminder of the guidelines, what you see here at 7.15, we wanted to put a space for citizens to have three up three minutes each for 15 minutes um, if there's anything not on the agenda that people wanted to speak to. And then we did say at the last minute after each discussion item, we would, um, you know, open for input also from citizens. Um, but we're going to be watching time frames, and Lisa's going to be our timekeeper. So, and if there's a lot of people that want to speak to something, and there's not much time, then we'd have to try to ask people to you, try to keep us the same so that everybody would have a chance, because we're trying to stay within our two-hour time frame. So, um, first of all, looking at the minutes, have people looked at the minutes, and is there a motion to? Oh, uh, is is there any uh, edits that people want to? Okay. John yeah. So, yeah. The John T is Sean, S-E-A-N, I think. No, I think it's S-H-A-W-N. Yeah, S-H-A-W-N. Oh, it's S-H-A-W-N. T-U-L-E-C-K-E. Right. Mostly have been using Paulson on his email. I don't, you might have to ask him what he prefers. I thought he was going to be here tonight. Well, if he's here, uh, we can ask him, but let's try to get him. Other than that, I, were there any other edits? No. Oh, sorry. 
for the sake of uh, reading, is yeah. it possible to either put a space between the paragraphs or a bullet, put it as a bullet point, and then okay, to be more time. clarified okay. as to where one ends and the other begins? Okay. Who's doing our minutes, by the way? Is that I, I'm you taking them this time. I will, I will do it myself. And if you need any help, I'm going to go to Yeah. So. <coughs> Anything else? Uh, yes. So, um, I guess we should note that the motion made to research um, system review boards of other community um, of other communities uh, passed. Um, and I guess because we're, we're keeping track of all the motions, right? So uh, I did move to extend the year. It, it wasn't seconded, but that did happen. Okay. But where did you do it? Yeah, which part are you talking about? Um, so Sean Talecki, Assistant Review Board. Sean really wants to see us this and review board sooner, sooner than later. Okay. Uh, I didn't make sure that it Okay. And the motion fell to get a second. Okay. So, Allie, you're making notes of those fixes? Or who's, who's making notes of the fixes that will have to? Right. You, you mean you got to amend, 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 amend them? Amend them before I send you to Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Is there anything else on the minutes? I wasn't uh, paying close enough attention. Sean, tell me again. You, you, what motion did you make that wasn't uh, seconded? <coughs> um, to extend the discussion? Extend the discussion. After that. Yeah, I think if we can keep track of what we actually do, mm -hmm. uh, make motions and do, mm -hmm. <laughs> second, right, right. And do approve, we could be really good. Was there a second? There was not. It was there not. Was, it was not. Was not. Was not. Do we need a second to mm -hmm. look forward to extending? Yeah. 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 To take a vote on it in the notes, it's not available. But if there's no second, we don't take a vote. Okay. Is that it? Okay. So, as amended, is there a motion to approve the minutes? I make a motion that we approve the minutes. Okay. With, with, with necessary corrections. Is that okay. it? All in favor say aye. 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 Let's go on to, let's see. Okay. Updates on council. I can't keep an eye on the time because. Um, Okay, so uh, there's a few things to update uh, the committee on. Uh, there's a hiring, okay, the hiring of the outreach specialist is in process. And there were several applicants, and it sounds like several good applicants. And so that, so I'm, in the next few weeks, somebody's going to be hired. We'll hear about it, so that's great. Um, there, uh, 365 had commented, um, Kevin, um, Stokes, you know, who's a new member of our council, um, brought to light, you know, wanting the police department guidelines to be, it was noted that the, the new outreach specialist um, job description did not <coughs> reference it, and um, there was some concern that it made sense to reference it, and the council talked about that. We yeah, about diversity. Diversity. Oh. No, this isn't about diversity. This is about the, the, guide, the police department guidelines. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, because he yeah. Yeah. those be Yeah, and that's a, a second thing yeah. that um, okay. he brought, um, which was the, uh, diversity hiring practices, and um, you know, which Kevin wants the whole staff, including council, um, to be doing some implicit bias training. So I know he's been looking at possible, and I know uh, the police committee has been thinking about this, but Kevin was encouraging that the whole uh, village and all of their support and counsel for this, that we do uh, do some kind of Im implicit bias training and that we look at our hiring practices um, so that we're so that we're reaching a diverse uh, potential candidates for jobs in the village. And council was in agreement with that. So how exactly that's going to go forward is still, you know, is yet to be determined, but there's a commitment to it. So. Um, 
let's see, the taser conversation, um, because Ellis was sick, and now um, he's evidently sick again, so, but we're trying to, uh, we're going to be sitting down with staff, which will be including the chief, the sergeants, <coughs> Patty um, and our legal counsel around the taser policy. So by our next meeting, we should we should kind of know how we're going forward. Um, I'd like to introduce our new uh, <laughs> backup liaison, Hi. Lisa Krieger. And do you want to say a little bit? Um, I do. I, I just really glad to be joining, and I, I could just add a couple of additions to updates from yep. council relating to the police guidelines. Um, also via the 365 uh, project. There, um, there was some concern that the guidelines weren't getting some of the visibility both among the police and also the citizens. And so um, uh, working through Patty, this came out in her um, village manager report. Uh, uh, the, they're redesigning the, um, you know, the glass area in front of the uh, dispatch area and there's they're going to actually um, like etch on the glass the higher order elements of the guidelines so when you walk into those lobby then those top level elements of the guidelines will be there um, also um, I've negotiated that 365 project is going to do an edit of the full guidelines down to kind of a word count and a little bit of a simpler reading level that would be suitable to be etched on a plaque. And a plaque will be posted. And then also Patty and 365 are working kind of back and forth to create like a trifold brochure that would be suitable to be available for people to take out with them and also to be given to people who um, are in the squad cars so that there's increased visibility of what those guidelines are about. Um, and as a secondary conversation about that, it came up that um, some time ago um, when people Miran were Mirandized, they were given a printed version of the Miranda rights and then they had stopped doing that. So they're gonna start doing that again. So there's a more of a durable thing about your not only your rights but also um, the the village values around policing and the police guidelines. So that just to add to no, um, uh, some other things that are going on in addition to what Kevin brought before council. Yeah, I'm glad to be working with you all. Thanks. Cool. And uh, one other thing, Lisa and I talked <coughs> about, you know, the JSTFs. Um, <coughs> With a two-year task force, you know, thinking of going forward about the work that you know we we have a lot of work still uh, to be done, just in terms of what council had asked us to do, um, and we are going to be recommending to council that we go ahead and make the justice system task force a, a long-term commission because uh, we feel like for the indefinite future there is work to be done. So we'll be bringing that to council. So that's the update from council, I believe. Yeah. And I'm glad you're here to help me make sure I don't forget stuff. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, okay, so now uh, we've got about 10 more minutes, or we can make it a little bit longer for citizen concerns. Um, if there's any comments that citizens want to make. I, I need to go to another meeting. So. Yeah. Yes. Um, I, I'll, I'll be quick, but I want to comment on three things. First of all, I strongly support the measures that you're taking to make all possible cases that can go to mayor's court, go to mayor's court. I've been saying this for a long time. There's no reason why we should be sending revenue or, or people over to Xenia when we can um, treat them the way we want them to be treated. And also, revenue collected can go to Yellow Springs instead of to Xenia. They get plenty over here. The other thing I want to say that I strongly support a citizens' advisory panel. That's also something I've been bringing up for a couple of years. I think it's very important, and it would be a valuable tool for the police department and the community. And the third thing I heard from someone, because I haven't watched the meetings yet, um, 
I heard that the situation with my son Adam Weezy and his dog was brought up at one of these meetings and from the information that I heard it was not correct and so if that is to be talked about it, it was a horrific incident Adam was living with me at the time and I know what happened that night and if that incident is to be brought up then I would prefer that someone speak with me about it since Adam is no longer here to speak for himself. Um, it was a very bad situation. They shot his dog, and his girlfriend was in between him and the dog. They could have very easily shot an innocent young woman as well. And the tape that they recorded of the incident, the mysteriously, the part where they shot the dog was erased. So that's all I will say tonight. But before anybody talks about that incident anymore, I would appreciate it if they would get the real story from me. And thank you. I have to go, or I'd stay up here meeting, but I have another meeting at 7.30, so. <laughs> <laughs> People say the names. Oh, yeah, that was Chrissy. Chrissy, Chrissy. Yeah. Good point, thank you. Any other uh, comments from citizens? Um, I'd like to say something. Uh, Could you introduce yourself? Uh, my name's William Toll, and uh, okay. Say it again. William Toll, T-O-L-L-E. T-O-L-L-E. And uh, uh, I was living in Xenia, and uh, I was aware of corruption going on with the police and uh, being paid off by drug dealers. So uh, I moved to Yellow Springs to be safe. And lately, the same people that was hassling me, they were called organized stalking, basically what it was, was following me everywhere. And uh, he's been around the town. I've got his license plate number. And I just want to stay out of it. I don't want to involve with anything that's going on. And other people are more of a threat than I am because they're aware of what's going on. So they need to just back off of me because I'm not involved with it and I don't want nothing to do with it. And uh, so hopefully everything gets sorted out because people, uh, like I said, people that are more of a threat to what's going on are aware of what's going on with the corruption in Green County. So thank you. Thanks. Thanks. My name is Claire Winnell, it's spelled W-I-N-O-L-D, and I came here to praise the job the Justice System Task Force has been doing such a multifaceted um, charge that you had, and I was very, um, when I returned to Yellow Springs, I grew up here and came back after 30 years to raise my son, I was concerned that, you know, there was a speed trap. I was, con later, but I was also, gratified that you know the police chief came to bring me some a box that somebody had donated uh, anonymously. It's a mix of wonderful and not so wonderful things that went on with the police, but as it culminated with the incidences with Lanya and with the breaking of the window, Laura, you wrote about that, right? She wrote <coughs> so well on the legalities of that. And the improvements that have been made since then I'm, I'm gratified, and thank you for your hard work. Thank you. I guess I wanted to give a little credit to our chief also, in terms of the, the changes in the department. He's done a great job. Okay, um, let's move on. It's not even quite 7.30. Is there anything else? Any other season? No? Okay. Uh, let's go ahead to the working groups. We'll start with the police work. <clears throat> okay, there should be <laughs> three pieces of paper that could be helpful as we talk about this. Um, at our last meeting, we did uh, approve a research project of looking at um, other communities and the ways in which they had community uh, police collaborative groups or advisory groups or police review structures. Uh, and so we decided we would at least visit three to five communities that have these things and uh, report on that and get a possible recommendation for changes in our, what would be a commission, if necessary, useful. Um, I want to say that the one challenge to this is that um, I have a list of about 10 to 12 communities in Ohio that have a similar population, under 4,000, uh, with the same or comparable median income, none of them have anything like police. And they, many, some of them have um, mayor's courts. They do not have uh, all of their 
decisions regarding policy, complaints, review, it's all internal in the department. The, there isn't even really a council, well, in one case there was a council committee that looks at police issues. But So um, really Ohio, in Ohio you're looking at big cities and some of them under um, consent agreements with the Department of Justice. So it's a little bit hard to compare. Um, it's sort of a bi-coastal event. So almost every small town in Oregon has, you know, so this will be more research on the internet, although I think that Bill and I are willing to go to Oregon and yeah. visit <laughs> if there's enough in the budget. But um, as, in terms of comparing with Ohio small towns, we're pretty different. So that's interesting. The, or the Oregon Police Department, I think it's the most important one I read last year, uh, their interactions with uh, citizens the approval ratings just really went up dramatically yeah. in the past year because of their approach to uh, to policing. So we would warn our looking into that. Yeah. Especially if we get personal. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, going there in person. But if we can't, we'll just, we'll just contact them some other way. And then, you know, and even if you make a list of things that are really similar, it's always surprising that they're not at all. Like I look, I talked to the police uh, sergeant, I think, in Amberley Village, and they're, they're they look exactly like Yellow Spring, except they have six synagogues. <laughs> six. It's like oh, obviously they don't get along if they have, to have six, <laughs> but apparently there's not much crime. Okay, the other thing. Um, that sort of bigger project is, and this connects to things that Lisa shared, to continue to support and advocate for the police training initiatives that support the community values that are outlined in our vision guidelines um, adopted by the village. And um, there's a couple parts to that. One is just talking with Chief Carlson about, um, well, no, before that even, when we first started this task force, I created a report about all the possible trainings that were involved in our police department. OPADA, the, the academy, new recruit training, requirements from the um, attorney general's office, um, all the options that were there, and talked with then Chief Hale about what things were being done, and he had records about all that who had gone to this training and who had gone to that training. And um, so I'd like to update that to see, because I think that um, Chief Carlson has added in new venues for training with the consulting, online consulting group that he's now involved in. And then we have our sergeant still trying to get us certified for the police, the Ohio Collaborative. And the Ohio Collaborative has some requirements as well as options. They have their own um, inherent bias training, implicit bias training. So there are these things that are out there that are sort of so to continue to document the landscape, what are all the possibilities. Um, the implicit bias training um, that everybody is like, let's do this. Well, we did do it once. Uh, David and I went to the training. Well, first of all, the, the council agreed, yeah, we want it. Then uh, Carlson hired in a trainer, and it was kind of, I would say, motivational. Yeah, well, it was uh, an intro, I think. Very, very, <coughs> very serious training. Yeah. So um, when I researched some of this, it had a lot of value. Yeah, no, it was valuable, but it's like yeah. one day of training. Yeah, a couple, three more. The um, long term impact or effect, and the evidence shows that. Having a day of training, it's good. It, it helps people understand some of the basic concepts. You know, you're not talking about the Klux Klan. You're talking about the unconscious bias that we all, and everybody, kindergarten teachers, everybody's like, everybody who's grown up in America has this sort of challenge of dealing with this. Um, so there are a lot of people researching it. Like, what would make a difference? And um, our chief has tried some structural things along the lines of could the officers um, know more about African American community in Yellow Springs? Like, could they go to history tours? Could they do this? Could they do that? 
So I think we just want to um, revisit all of this, like what's out there, what kind of new recruit training is being offered, um, what are the options for, and I can talk to Kevin about that further, what are the options for implicit bias training. So that's our second uh, goal and action plan. Um, and then the third thing is that we wanted to have, um, or we wanted to consider the possibility of a public forum. Because our charge from the council is to um, engage the public in understanding more about the police department and various policies. Um, so that could, for example, since Mayor's Court is really up right now, it could be a meeting about the Mayor's Court. However, um, we originally thought about doing it with HRC, and now that's not quite that's not quite going to work out. Um, and they, in the past, have done a lot of public meetings. I mean, it still might. That's just that HRC needs more numbers. Okay. So, so that still might happen. Yeah, it's still it, now it's very small. Mm -hmm. So it still could so, happen with them. But I could I could also work with Steve. And yeah. There's another. Yeah, it's definitely possible. I mean, there's something. They have the retreat coming up. HR has a retreat coming up, and they can figure out yeah. what direction their commission is taking, because I'm no longer on it. So. Oh, okay. Um, you know, the two uh, things that we did research, the two big communities, and that was, you can see it on that sample report of the, the things we looked at. Um, it's obvious that these committees, these citizen police committees um, have a lot more, well, first of all, they tend to have officers, non-voting officers on their committee. And they also um, engage more with the community. They have more regular, ongoing engagement with the community. And, you know, I'm not sure is that a good thing, not a good thing, what's the difference, but that is something that seems to be typical of these groups, and we haven't really done that. Um, and then the third page was just questions that I came up with, and I'm certainly open to people emailing me additional questions when I'm talking to somebody on the phone and whatever. Um, and, you know, the touchy subject of citizen complaints and police review. So far, other than Dayton, Dayton has a pretty complicated, sophisticated infrastructure for that. But the other, the small towns I talked to, they're like, oh, you just go to the police department and fill out a form. You know, it's all very internal. So that's an interesting question, how to do. Well, and I did research what HRC used to do. I don't know how long ago that was, to complaints. And people would come, you know, tell us about different situations they had been in and things like that. And that way, we, um, or they could have <clears throat> and more, it wasn't as intimidating as going yeah. to a village council meeting. Right. And we have a council liaison, of course, so it would still get to council, but it was a way of. Yeah. But I don't. There wasn't an end goal with it. So well, the thing that Joan and this a long time. Ago, I think that Joan was a lot told me about yeah. a pretty detailed process. But she said in the end, the village council actually stopped it and said they didn't want them to do it anymore. It was well, pretty complicated. Was, yeah. One thing I'll say, because I was on the council back when that was kind of fizzling out over time, is that um, uh, HRC wanted to have private conversations, and they're required to have public meetings. Well, I see. see, that was the rub. Okay. Because some people were like not wanting to come to it in a public sure setting that they wanted to be able to speak privately. So then they tried to just have a couple of members, like I think Joan was involved, where, you know, speak to Joan and then Joan would talk to the chief, you know, and kind of play this kind of mediating role. Okay. I think, you know, it had some success, I think, but that was where, and the council said, well, you cannot have private, you can't have a private meeting, this has got to be a public meeting, so. Well, I think it's fairly obvious that such a thing should exist at some level and in some way. And figuring out how that works. Mm -hmm. uh, what works for other people is a different goal. It sounds like what was there was formal, so something formal uh, is what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Could it possibly work through you know, either mediation or uh, a 
advisory board or something like that? Is that, is that possible? Well, that's, that's a lot that's of different ways that people have yeah. tried to do it, yeah. Um, some people even have online complaint forms, so you don't have to talk to them about it. <laughs> um, I think it's worth researching and figuring out what, what makes sense. It's a little complicated because it runs into HR policies. These are, these are government employees. Uh, so, yeah. I'd, I'd like to add a comment. Um, in, my, in my experience, um, you know, certainly the the journey to being more aware of implicit bias is, you know, it's a journey. It's not sure. I mean, people use that term, you know, you're woke, right. but it's not quite like, whoa. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it, it is a journey, and it, it takes a lot of work. And to your point about it not being like a training in one and done. And, and I wonder, as these um, ideas are negotiated, considered and negotiated if there's a way to group them into two categories with one category being actions and interventions that we might take that gets in front of on uh, of things that we don't want to have happen happen so that would be more the category of you know training or um, staff meetings where um, it, it's a it's a it's something you talk about regularly like what what did you encounter today what did you encounter this week where where your implicit biases may be triggered you know where it becomes something that becomes more of a it becomes more comfortable talking about it so there's this category of the actions you take to prevent racism in our community and then there's other ca another category of actions that are taken when something, when there's a complaint, when there's a problem, when there seems to be racism, um, you know, restorative justice, mediation. Because it, it seems to me, I, I mean, I'm hearing um, passion around having some kind of a citizen committee. But, you know, what's that old phrase about locking the door, the bar door after the, <laughs> you know, if we're only focusing on taking action when something's already happened, then that's reactive rather than proactive. So I guess right, I'm... Yeah, you're right, but I mean, not all citizen complaints are about racism. I mean, that's one of the, it's common. Mm -hmm. No, but I mean, I just put that out there as, right. you know, yeah. an example. And I think it's something that's become, yeah. you know, when we talk about implicit bias, so, I mean, I'm just wondering, I guess my suggestion at a higher level is to think both in terms of what might be done to increase awareness and prevent there being issues, and then also a category of, of what actions, what are the processes when something has happened. Well, I think a couple things have to uh, continue. Thanks. 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 A couple things have to continue. One is conversations with Chief Carlson and sergeants, which we've already had some of those, but because they also are hemmed in by requirements from the Attorney General's office, you must take the supplies of the supplies of the hours. And if they join the collaborator, that'll be yet another uh, expectation. And those groups both have their own in the supply. You know, they have their training, in addition to things that are, where there's tons of people trying to make money is training right now. So just trying to sort out what's out there and how how to evaluate you know, and how to go forward. Can I say something? Okay. Um, one thing I would ask you guys to do is check in with Chief about de escalation training. To me, you know, Chief had this guy who he thought was fantastic. They had this first, uh, you know, training. De to me, de-escalation is the foundational training that we want to see happen. I mean, so, uh, and I know that that person is no longer available to do de-escalation training. And I think Chief has, the last time I talked to him about it, it's been a while ago, um, he had not identified a place to get that kind of training. And I think it's absolutely key and we may need to go out of the region, we may need to go outside of the state to get good. Mm -hmm. Well, 
So they, they did CIT training, which is the start of. They did do that. And yeah, I don't CIT know. training. They did, but this, the, at least I don't know. Is it the? It's not exactly the same, is it? I mean, it's not the same no, thing. No. And um, and what he was trying to pursue. The last time I talked to him, he had not found a replacement at all. Okay. So if we could help Chief, um, I mean, I, I know he felt like that was so important. And yeah, Janet probably has good resources. Yeah, so maybe if we could help Chief identify um, some resources there, because I know he's busy and you know trying to find that. Maybe that's a place in terms of the whole training question. Um, I mean, you might want to check with him, but that's my impression right. is that he could do some. <coughs> when we got all, when we start talking about all this training, too, we have to remember there's budget issues. I mean, a product class, of course, is a free. I know, but we want good. To me, that's something we should pay for. It. To me, that's that should be something that okay. the, the village. I mean, as one one member of the council, but I would say that should be a priority. It seems like the, the outreach specialist is hired. I would mesh with them. I think there's too much pressure put on the chief to solve all these things, and there needs to be a little more delegation. Well, and I don't know that, um, I was saying I would check with him because maybe it's not a problem, but the last time I talked to him, I know he hadn't identified someone, and yeah, maybe the outreach specialist would play some role in helping. I don't know exactly how, you know, I don't think he quite knows either, but, um, you know, in terms of the training, I know Chief wants to be in the center of that as he should be. So that would, that's just one thought. And I was going to ask, does anybody, so there's, in terms of a, a public forum, there's the idea of something about the mayor's court, and then there's the idea of uh, something around um, implicit bias. Is that what you were saying? No, we've the, just been brainstorming. I think you know, have to I just wondered if anybody assessing a topic. I, and well, I just wondered if you know, since we're here together as a committee, do, do committee members have any other suggestions they would like to throw out there? Yeah. <laughs> okay, you were going to don't hurt yourself. Um, as far as training goes. You know, timing is important too because you know, I know a lot of the conversations over the past many years have been the police need more training in this and this and this, and there's required state and federal whatever training. And I suspect that if you added all of it, it's several police person lifetimes. <laughs> so it isn't just money, but you know, having enough knowledge to go to training and be able to be a police officer and use it. Uh, I think, even to, to Lisa's point, I was thinking around the line, same kind of lines. Proactive and reactive responses to things are. You know, are, are necessary. I think some kind of you know, maybe a more formal process around important issues. Uh, implicit bias covers a lot of territory, uh, but you know, removing some specific instances, there have to be things that go on that people are saying, boy, this was a real messy one, what do I do? And then there are the way too many videos that show up of some police officer someplace else being a real jerk at best. And I would think that it would be really valuable to sit down and watch those videos, talk about those instances, and say, this is not what we're going to do. This is how we're going to do it. I'm sorry. Wait a minute. Are you talking about the training options for officers or the public forum? I'm getting confused. I'm talking about, I guess I'll put it under training, but maybe you know, not so much training, but you know, you, you sit everybody down and say, everybody being the, the police officers. officers. You know, it's an internal. Now they can make up their own training. It, it's free to pull the video off of YouTube and say, right. what do we not want to do like this next time? Right. Or, you know, this yeah. thing happened. New Year's Eve happened. What do we want to do next time? Yeah, so, I mean, actually, we did talk about that with the chief already. I mean, not your, not that exact, but pretty close. Can we use incident-based training? Yeah. But So it's a good idea, and we can bring it up again for sure. And I know Hale did that. Yeah, and Hale did some of that. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty much, you know, we're sort of, Anyway, we'll keep we'll keep paying attention to it as one of our big goals. Well, and the other and, and another uh, thing that I think you know, there's a significant opportunity in you know, speaking of you know, things in the community, not necessarily a forum, but um, having a continual you know, contact in small and medium-sized groups, as opposed to everybody come to the come to the gym and beat up the police kind of a thing. Um, have uh, <clears throat> police continue to have meetings with particularly young people to talk specifically That's about good. traffic stops. Not point. everything police related, but you know, repair the damage that exists because they're teenagers and the police and because of what happens you know, in the police. 
It's a good uh, point. I mean, yeah. We did see that some of these other groups sort of have, they put a lot of emphasis on connecting with you. Well, with the latest, sense. with the, anal the data analysis, uh, you know, I'm sure people are picking up and saying, I see they, they're targeting us. So having some more, you know, long-term interactions. The young people of color have started this several, probably two, three years ago, had a meeting between Chief Hale and, you know, Sergeant somebody or another to start the conversation. And it's the kind of thing that has to happen, you know. They, they had something like that. Yeah, with one, one meeting. They had, they had something like the high school. Oh, every once in a while, there's another one of those kind of things. I was thinking about this one where they, where they got together. But it was, it was a one-off, and you need to do more than one. It's really yeah, this, this, one, this one was as a result last year. Some of us were called in to go and talk and sit in as one, one of the teachers at high school, I forget who it was. And in the course of the conversation, came up with, okay, how do you guys want to do it? So they came up with the idea, meet with the police. The police come, and they dress down, okay? Mm -hmm. Uh, in their uniform, they wear so, not even soft uniforms. They just come dressed casual. My understanding was that they did that. They had that. Oh, that was a you know pie smashing the face contest. Or something yeah, like that's that. that's sort of thing. How well that went, I, you know, I, I don't know, but I, I'm I'm in agreement. Excuse me, I'm in agreement with you that you can't have one shot uh, things that go on. I think that's going to be it because the true guideline for it is to yeah, okay, we had this. Uh, let's look at the data after that and see what happened. Yeah, you know, teenagers every few years too. Yeah, so. I think they did a couple of them, but I don't know if they <coughs> talked about it afterwards. There was, you know, there were a couple of them, one at the school, there was one at, um, I think two of the churches maybe. I think one of them was also was just before Chief Carlson was actually named as chief. Mm -hmm. uh, he was involved, wasn't he? Yeah, he was involved. Yeah. But I don't know if anyone talked about it afterwards. You know, did they take the data? I mean, I, I read notes from it, but I don't know what happened. No, because see, this was, you look at this now, this was, this was last year. Yeah. Yeah, I'm talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, more, you know, periodic and formal, more, more formal. Okay, well, to be continued. Yeah, to it, yeah. I just, yeah, it's yeah. time probably to move on to the mayor's. Okay. Yes, yeah, sorry. Okay. Okay. Last thing. <coughs> Uh, yeah, this, uh, in terms of the, the <coughs> if you got to do, you know, be proactive and, and reactive. I feel like there's actually kind of an analogy that can be drawn between, you know, the proactive and reactive in terms of addressing uh, issues with the police and uh, police's own work, trying to be proactive and reactive with regards to uh, crime, trying to prevent crime from occurring in the first place, well, on one hand, and then on the other hand, you also have, like, Courts and citations and things. Um, and, uh, you know, it's probably a point that doesn't even really need to be made, but just want to put out that before we have a community forum, of course, we want that to be approved by JCF, right? I think, I think we're all in agreement on that. Right. Yeah, it's, and it's, we're talking about late spring or early summer, right? it's, yeah, yeah. it's right. down the road. All right. But it's a goal. Right. Yeah, it's hard to talk about things before we even have a yeah, we grasp of them, you know. Right. So, let's move on to the mayor's court report. Well, you've got the information in your packet. Uh, pretty straightforward, instead of going over it. I think if we just answer questions, it's because it's pretty solid explanatory. Well, I have a first comment on statement of change number one. Require YSPD officers by village policy to charge cases under Yelpsman's ordinances unless legally impossible. And um, we're going to be talking about um, you know disparate impacts on the poor and address trying to address those. There's this new committee, new working group, and I do agree that if, we, if our cases, you know, in order to do that, our cases need to be going to mayor's court. I think it's very difficult for us to impact anything that happens to Green County. So, um, so I, I liked this. Well, did we already, did we, already, we already bring we that already to council? We already presented that, and you guys already yeah. said, yeah, everybody right. like right. it, so. It's been presented and approved by council, right? 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 Yeah, mm -hmm. not quite a year ago. No, but it's, no. Yeah. 
Well, there's no, there's nothing formal in place. Well, but there's nothing formal in place, and that's yeah. the difference. I, that I, from what I understood, this statement was asked because it says council to ask chief for a monthly report. That's one thing we can do, and recommending to council to pass a policy requiring YSPD employees to charge basis to mayor. Oh, well, we did that. So we the task force has done about as much as we can do on that. It's now downstream from us. Well, yeah. We didn't pass the policy, however, uh, the council did. So right. I understood this is the next step. But you did not pass the policy. I mean, it, I'm asking. We did not. No, no, no. Oh, well, so you agreed it was a good idea and liked it. I think it's something to, con to pursue more yeah. specific. Making it, a, you know, in writing as opposed to yeah, it was a great idea. Yeah. We probably should. I'm sorry, it was there a the of the wording of what we did present to council, which was approved by council, just to make sure it wasn't it wasn't specific, but it was a recommendation. So yeah, well, we, we made a recommendation to council to go this. says this, requires, so requires cases that can go to mayor's court to go to mayor's court. Okay. Okay. That's different than what happened. Is, that, is, it, is it because of the language of the word requiring? Or is that something? Change. Yeah, she could. I mean, if you might remember, yeah. maybe I said you didn't get to dance in a, in a, in a conversation. But, here. When I thought that that was what the recommendation was, and then back in April, and then as I was arguing again, yeah. well, arguing at least, you know, got to think about the implications of that and why I said you what I was going to say about it. Um, uh, Cindy was like, well, actually, this recommendation would in no way limit officers' discretion to send cases. To Xenia, and if it did, I would, okay, exactly. she, she wouldn't support it. So, oh, we got it. Great. JS, the Justice and Justice recommends that the council direct the chief of police to direct officers to refer all allowed misdemeanors possible to the Yellow Springs Mayor's Court. Right. That's what was right. Right. So, the only difference, the word required is well, this is saying the council would actually pass the policy. We wouldn't direct the chief and all that. We would actually set the policy. And there was some concern about impinging on the discretion of police officers. Yeah. And I believe I've been talking to enough people around the village that it is something we should pursue. It is not something we have done. <coughs> uh, we've encouraged. And, and one thing, um, I mean, I think what would be important is to actually see what has happened in the, in the last, you know, actually, I mean, that was something I thought the data, you know, this data collection, which does tell us evidently which, which courts, uh, you know, cases have gone to, um, actually, no, I mean, for the, uh, for the people who are going to be trying to work on disparate impacts on the poor, we want to see what, what has the impacts been on people in terms of, you know, what kind of fines are they getting, and, you know, and where have they been being sent in the last several months since we had encouraged them to be sent, you know, to mayor's court. Let's see what's happened. And then, uh, you know, so that we can, is there still a problem? Well, I, I would say so. that our concern is that it used to be in the good old days the way we wanted it, and then the bad old days came and it changed the way we don't want it, and now we're now we're back to maybe it being better having something in policy, in writing, codified, pick a word or phrase that says it means the appropriate thing, but instead of just making the recommendation that this happened and then leaving it that and hoping that it happened is not a good idea, which is what I'm hearing you say your sense is also in the community that we need to say in writing, you will behave this way, police officer not you have the discretion to not behave this way we'd really like you to so the next step would be to put it in writing that isn't something we can do so we're we're done with this is the way i'm seeing it is that yeah i mean it's a one paragraph resolution i'd be happy to write it for yeah. council's consideration i mean it's a one paragraph policy then you get a report from the police every month how many cases what what types did you send to mayor's court? Which ones went to Xenia? There's some by statute they have to send to Xenia. And then you can see, and then officers can be evaluated on how they're charged. 
you know, it's a it's an employment standard. Yeah. With this is the behavior we expect. We don't expect our Yellow Springs cases if they can come to Mayor's Court to be going to see. Them. And downstream of this, there are other you know, things that we're talking about, diversion, et cetera, which could be in, you know have an impact right. on that too. So it's not as you know that's the number one isn't all we have. Do you want to comment? Oh, go ahead first. Um, so yeah, I'd like to see this recommendation go through. I mean, as it would if we passed it now. Anyway, but you know, go through notice and comment. Um, and, and but like basic ways, I support it. I just, I just want to hear what the department has to say on the matter. Um, and then, do you guys want uh, the? I'll have the data set yet for that would include this. But do you guys? But I can impress it. Do you guys want the data for like which cases, what, where? That would be great. Yeah, when I asked for it, I couldn't get it, and I had to pay for it from the Zine Municipal Court. It cost me sixty dollars personally to get I, it. I guess what SPD has it. Oh, well, of course they do. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, I was going to get it from my SPD. Yeah, good. Right. Good luck right. to you. Good. You're the you're maybe the favored person. <laughs> So I, I also just want to say that I I also strongly would support this if it became if it came before council. I think Laura brought up a really important thing is that it has to have uh, expectation of a reporting component, and or else it won't be meaningful. And I would recommend that the way we handle the retrospective data is not maybe go back too far but to make the case that if we're going to start tracking going forward, we need to have a baseline. And so we want to be sensitive on the burden on staff, right? But this is also extremely important. It's something that if council's going to vote on, so that part of voting it in would just say, you know, this is the language. In order to implement it, we need X amount of retrospective data to set a baseline and then continue to track it going forward. So that, you know, like you're not personally, I mean, that, that could become just part of moving forward. Does that make sense? In other words, you're not on the hook to request this data. That part of implementation of the process. I was about to request this data anyway. Right, but, but what I'm saying is you may not have to. I mean, you could, okay. but. I think it sends a message that this is a, a process that council is asking for, and that part of that includes establishing some baseline data. So what council, do you mean the council would, would, would council would, would request, request the data. Say we want the baseline. Council data. would request Something the baseline. Like yes. Well, wait. Okay, but, but like, isn't also the idea that going forward, it's almost like. You'd almost be setting by policy which cases go where. So you the policy is actually in the Yellow Springs ordinances. Mm -hmm. We have an ordinance book filled with here's the, 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 here's the charges, and and they've been trained on it in the past. And also needs a chief sheet showing what mm -hmm. code but section. It has to be monitored. Okay, I, I guess what what confuses me is that um, basically I'm imagining that. Basically, you know, currently in the past, um, what what I'd be looking at is basically how officers have been using their discretion to send in some cases to Xenia, in some cases to Mayor's Court. But the recommendation, if implemented, will probably almost make it like predictable which cases will go where, because mm -hmm. unless yeah, it can't. But you have to monitor. You want to monitor, right? It's not because it's a behavior change. So, I mean, right. any time you implement a major behavior change, you have to monitor it. That's true. Okay. To make certain, not, and not okay, in so like a, a not in like a punishing, oh, you're bad way, but just say it's something new. Right. There's a new mayor. It's a transition. Okay. That kind of thing. Eventually, it becomes, as Laura said, something you include in an evaluation. And that's my idea. Okay. And do we think that um, there was this idea of a notice and comment hearing from the department? Are there some circumstances where they think they need that discretion? And do we want to recommend that we, well, we'll be getting input certainly from Chief 
and he can ask you know talk to his department if there are things um, then I guess he would bring that to council. Well, I would suggest looking at all the different yeah, that's right. All the different things in here, they all go together and, and right. would have an impact on that. So look at them all together instead of trying to you know, parse one because there's an interrelationship between them. Okay. So number two, talking about a diversion restorative justice component, uh, it's going to have you know, some impact on that. Um, charging, not charging cases is in a criminal versus civil, civil you know, number four. <coughs> of not wanting to say to somebody, you just had to do your job, you know, looking over your shoulder all the time. If you're not sure, here's a place you can come and ask. You know, could mitigate that, I suspect. Here's a person in the, in the system you can come and ask. What's that? Yeah, can you repeat that? In, I sense, and it's a real legitimate concern, you know, not wanting to be saying to people, you know, the police in this case, we're looking over your shoulder and making, we want to track everything you're doing, you know, and, and here's how we're going to do it. Uh, if you're not sure about how to cite something, you know, one of the other things, one of the other you know, changes we're suggesting, you know, have a, a group of people that makes a determination for something that you're not sure about, so that you're not put in a position of having to make the same decision all the time, or if you're not sure, you, you might make a bad decision and get in trouble for it. You'd say, hey, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm sorry, can I, can I put this in, in different words and make probably see if I understand you correctly? Are, are you stating that when a, um, when a lawyer is hired to perform the prosecutor's role, that the prosecutor can provide legal advice to officers? That, is that essentially what you're saying? That's one thing that, that, could, that ha could happen, but this is the situation where when the only tool in your toolbox is a gun, you know, everything is a crime. And there are many cases that are really civil, like crim that we might look at them as like criminal mischief, damaging, right. that are really civil in nature, and especially... You want to give an example? Well, I, yeah, I can. A citizen who da damaged um, the concrete in front of Tom's. And this is really in the nature of a civil case, but because a mad contractor shows up and is yelling at the young lady police officer who's a you know, relatively new officer, um, she, you know, she pulls out her citation pad and treats it as a crime. I mean, really, it's a civil case involved damage to property that is, could be paid for and repaired, and everybody goes on their merry way. There's no criminal intent there, you know. Um, but would they require the officer to, to know that? Well, exactly. And this is why when I was a prosecutor, good, experienced officers would pick up the phone, and they would say, call somebody, and they'd say, hey, here's what I got. I don't think it's criminal. What do you think? If they have any doubt, and, and if you have any doubt about it, you don't have to charge it right then. If you get enough I get ID, then you turn the case in so the sergeants and the chief can look at it. They can make it to maybe make a few calls and ask a few questions. So it's it's to say, hey, first of all, they need training. Some of this goes in with training. What's civil? What's criminal? How can you tell the difference? And uh, what, where do you go if you have questions? And it's a good thing you can pick up the phone call to sergeants chief if he's on duty, you know, but instead of just pulling out the citation pad and suddenly you've got a citizen having to get a lawyer, that one got charged to see you, by the way. Yeah. So the duty officers, they still fill out a report, right? Well, well they feel <coughs> sure, but it's already criminalized. No, no, I'm saying for their own tracking purposes. No. It should be where they, they feel like they went on a call. Yeah, yeah. So well, there's, a, there's an incident report, and there's, yeah, but um, it's already done. The damage is done. The citation's been issued. They've been summoned into the court. That one didn't, should have been charged under. See, and that's the other thing about charging under our own ordinances. If there are these kind of mistakes or a second look is needed, if it's in our own mayor's court, and again, if you had a diversion program, the prosecutor could look at that and say, no, this was civil, I'm going to dismiss that, and we can deal with it civilly if there's any damn to work. 
if there needs to be a restorative circle or somebody needs to have some education on why that was a bad thing to do, maybe it's not criminal. So there's no, once you send it to Xenia, there's no pulling it back and there's no diversion, okay? You're, you are sending people down a very bad, nasty road. And um, it's really quite costly. Very, can be costly in, time, in a lot of different ways. I think if you put together, you know, two, statement of change needed, uh, strategy for change A, on the bottom of the first page of this, and, and then at the, at the very end, 4A strategies of change, those, those four things are, uh, will, will aid in this process. Is there people who haven't spoken who want to I'm just, well, I just want to clarify, in terms of the plan of work, item two, three, four, the action is to put it on the agenda for an in-depth consideration, correct? Yeah. And so it's really only item one that we're trying to maybe make a motion and consider how it goes forward just, in a very tonight. This is our work to do. This is what we're planning to do for right. the year. It's not asking for anything on right. it. So Except for about. one. No, I mean, you're not, not even asking that tonight. No, okay. they're all here. Here are these four. Okay. Anybody who hasn't commented that wants to say something? Any questions? Okay. So I assume that on the next agenda, that first one will be on the agenda. Something like that, that would be how it would plan this one. Well, I'd be ambitious and put them all. I mean, we want to move them all to council. I mean, we want to, we're holding this right. committee, we'll make a recommendation. We, we can draft, well, res, draft resolution. Our next meeting, we'll figure out what we want to do next. Well, I was going to say, I'm the only person speaking to new policy projects. We've still got 20 minutes. I don't think I'm going to need 20 minutes. Do we want to? Well, our data. Uh, That's true. That's pretty All right. So we'll just we'll just move it to the next meeting. I was just going to say we want to try to make a decision on that first thing. But let's just move forward then. Is everybody set? Okay. So the new policy projects, um, which is I, uh, Ellis has something on cameras uh, that he's going to be working on. Are you working? With him? Okay. So um, Bill's working on that. Yeah, how, we, how we put it, mass surveillance strategies. Mass surveillance strategies, yeah. that sounds yeah. serious business. <laughs> <laughs> how to do it better. <laughs> how to do it better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, the one that I was going to lead on was addressing justice system disparate impacts on the poor. And uh, the first process thing we had said we would do is we're going to bring in a new working focus that we make sure we have enough resource uh, for that. I just want to say myself, Al Fluter has, uh, is interested in working on this. Um, John Booth from the community is interested in working on this. And Jen Conley, who is from the community, is interested. And I understand there's one other person that I don't know who may be interested. And I, I don't know if there's anybody else from the committee who's interested in working on this. Um, what I'm imagining, if there's anybody else who's interested, we have at the moment two members of the committee, so we could definitely have two more people. Um, what I'm imagining in terms of a work, my work plan is not anything as detailed as what you guys have done, because I thought our committee should decide that. We should kind of sit down and decide that. Um, but. Um, I think that we have enough resource in terms of people. I'm imagining we're going to be doing two things to start with. Uh, one, it would be very good to know, to be able to look at the impacts on people, you know, who are being, uh, going to Mayor's Court or to Green County. For us to, if we're going to look back a little bit in order to have that data foundational thing that we're going to, uh, that we're going to do for the Mayor's Court, um, that's going to help us too because we want to know, you know, what kind of, you know, how are people getting ticketed? <coughs> what is it costing them financially? Um, one of the things that in 
talking about this uh, this work. We had looked, you know, this idea of people losing their driver's licenses because they could not afford to pay tickets. You know, that's an important. That will be one of the things we'll be looking at. Um, and then uh, best practices. So trying to look, you know, out in, you know, do, doing some research about what communities are doing, who carry, who are looking at this negative impact, and how they're trying to resolve, how they're trying to. You know, move away from those sort of practices. So tonight, I was just hoping before Al leaves that we could try to set up, you know, talk and, uh, and then we'll set up a meeting in the next couple of weeks um, with this group of four. And if there's other uh, community members who are interested, or you know, we can probably use a couple more people to help with the work. And we'll be relying on the data people also. So that's that's all I really got to report because I thought we should meet together to put something more concrete together. Any comments or questions or I'm interested in it, but I will probably be having a fairly major surgery in the next couple months. So oh, are you? Okay. So I, I don't want to be. I would like to contribute, but I, okay. Well, we'll keep you posted, and okay. if you could drop off and come back in, it'd be great to have you. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Okay. Okay. And your name. Okay. Um, anybody else? Any other comments or questions? Okay. Oh, and one place else that maybe we should be looking to is 365. I don't know if there's folks there who have any time on their hands to help or would be interested. Okay. I move that we approve. You know, this is now a project of JSTF to address the disparate impact of the port. No longer just, just exploring, creating. John, John speaking. Formally creating. Yes. We, we had, he had, you know, just suggested if we have new work that we kind of do yes. the formal process. So okay. people, so he's making a motion that we go ahead and that this become part of the work. Yeah. Are you calling? He made a motion. Is there a second? Oh, that was my question. My question was, you call the call? Yes, he was reminding me. <laughs> so you, you call for a motion. Second. Yeah. And there's a second. And all in favor, say aye. 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 Just that we that this will, that, that we do believe there's enough resource to work on this on this work. You and I and Kate and on the disparity back on the board. Yeah. You weren't as that committee you were just exploring if that was one And is this a book that you recommend? Yes, and I have two copies of this. Um, and if yeah, um, called Not a Crime to Be Poor by Peter Elman, who is uh, who, and the subtitles of criminaliz criminalization of poverty in America. And um, yeah, I picked up a couple of copies. I gave one to Al. Is there anybody else that wants to take this? I probably am not going to be reading it immediately. Um, okay. I was going to say AC, there's a lot of great stuff. ACLU is very. Is, no one knows do you want to take it? Yeah, okay, just bring it back to me. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of good stuff ACLU has published around these same questions, this kind of issue, and they've got a lot of, I mean, a lot of times their recommendations are kind of at a higher level. I mean, really, Ferguson would be a case study to look at, I think, in terms of what was going on there and the um, what came down from the Justice Department in terms of changing some of their practices there because of the way they were ticketing people and, you know, supporting their public services to that. Could I make a comment? Yes. Well, how timely this is, um, on January 29th, uh, Ohio Supreme Court uh, Justice O'Connor issued a letter to all Ohio judges because that policy you just mentioned from the Justice Department, the current Justice Department has reversed it. Yeah. And uh, the, the Ferguson? Uh-huh. Yeah. And uh, Justice O'Connor is, she starts out by saying, I am aware that the U.S. Department of Justice recently rescinded its March 14, 2016 guidance to state courts concerning fines, fees, and bail practices. And then she goes on to say, I'm here to remind you that we're not to run the courts like justice as a commodity. 
and that people are there to pay a fee for service mm -hmm. and that your justice means looking at fines and costs so that they're not being used to run the court and to impoverish people. And then a corollary to that is um, you're not allowed to do other things of punishments to them if they can't pay. So I'm going to give this letter to you, and it's got some links to resources oh, right. from on the High Supreme Court website. Awesome. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's, that's really okay. Okay, that's my report. So uh, let's go ahead then and move on to the discussion of the data group uh, 2018 plan. Okay. Um, so I just wanted to start with. Just making sure that I wasn't sure how comfortable people felt with the previous report. If, if they felt like they understood it, they had any questions. Um, yes. Yeah, that's the base. Yeah, it's one page explaining it, and then you've got your one page chart, and then this is it explains. It's basically just showing counts for these different sort of violation groups that I created, and then these other 12 pages explain what charge statutes I actually was fitting in those groups. And um, the degree of the, of the charge, the degree for misdemeanor, um, which I guess gives you some sense of like the severity of the, of the consequences for, for the charge. Um, and this, this front page also under degree of misdemeanor, by the way, it states the maximum jail terms and fines that you can pay for each of those misdemeanors. Of course, usually people don't get maximum punishments for things. Um, and also, things can get let down once they get to court. Prosecutors can change what the charge was, I guess in either direction, um, but gives you some sense of what's going on. Oh, as, as people said, like, with regard to the previous report, like, oh, these are just all citations, you know, what they're for. And this sort of gives you a sort of some idea of what they were for. Um, so anyway, did anyone have any questions about this report? No, move on. One question I do have, yeah. what should we, should we, I think we should pass this in some way on the council. And, and I was going to ask how do we want to do that when, when we get reports, I don't know. Yeah. If, if we pass on the council, in, in light of what was said the last time, I strongly urge that it be condensed. And not, uh, I mean, have the whole thing available for someone who's interested, but uh, I don't think they're going to read 14 pages. It seems to me maybe it could be the highlighted uh, uh, categories could be could be uh, uh, put uh, could be if it could be condensed to one or two pages. I think it would have a, a bigger impact. And also, I think a lot that the console and, and people on the console have talked about timelines, wanting to see how the change is. And, and it, I think uh, it would be, if I could, if some of this could be put in a, on the graph to show the trends over time, it would be much, it would be more value. Just, I mean, so many of these categories have one, oh, yeah, uh, sure. one incident. And I don't, I just don't know what value having all of those things go to the console. I mean, I, that's just my reaction. Um, if we want to have an impact, I think we have to present it in a fashion that's going to get their attention and to uh, give them valuable to information that we have to. Um, other comments? I mean, the question is, when we have reports, they'll be like this, and I know council well, the question behind this yeah. that question, yeah. yeah, which is who are we doing this for? What is the question this right. answers? We have to okay. start with the questions that why are we doing this? I mean, I, I would say transparency, but that's really you know pretty huge and generic. I mean, I support it, but I think in terms of driving the research design, and you know, do we really want to go from 2010 to 2016? Does anybody on council care about that because they want to look at going forward. So we have to do a little more thinking about how we frame the questions for them. Not that they're dummies, but you know, what is the question that we're trying to get to that we want the council and the police department? I mean, would the police department find this useful? And then what 
what are the what are they looking for when they do this? And I would agree that the, if you look at a chart and it says um, obstructing uh, official business and there's six residents cited and ten out of towners, but you don't know when did that happen in one year? I mean, over a six-year period, you know, what, mm -hmm. was that? That's a total of six years, but it could have all happened in one year, and it could have all been one off. But you know, I mean, it's sort of like it's a little too much detail without enough clarity. Without enough detail. <laughs> without enough detail. Not too much detail without enough clarity to be handed over to the council. I think we're asking for trouble. Isn't there a pile of data supporting information, et cetera, that goes along with the thing we want to say to council that gets filed someplace by Judy? I'd say put it in that pile. That, that is exactly uh, this on it. I, mean, this I don't is, think all of it does though. The last report was what, 444 pages? Probably that all, <laughs> so, that all go into that all Oh, you mean on the housing needs assessment? Right. That entire It's all system. online. So okay. I mean if this stuff is available But, online, so but you know there's a there's a you know it's got this uh, executive summary that yeah. is very readable. Mm -hmm. It's still several pages, but concise. it's it's very it's very concise. Was it that supported the previous analysis that Bob did? Hmm? This is different. I'm Bob not sure no, how to use this totally to raise the question. I, I think we should think about That's it. I think it's is. in some form it probably should come to council and the community. But I agree with Pat's. Yeah. Uh, question of sort of how to, you know, because as we're thinking about the mayor's court, it's useful, This it's kind of useful to know, better, you know, what are the, you know, have a better sense of, of what we're talking about. Um, and I agree, it, you know, I, I agree with what Al said and I agree with what Pat said, and maybe, I don't know, does the data, you guys are working on the data stuff together, is there, I do think it's it, having some better sense of what kind of citations are happening would be helpful. And right. but I agree that I agree with what you guys said in terms of trying to make it more understandable and useful, just as the council and the community is trying to have a better sense of what's happening. So I don't have an answer to that. Okay. So it's possible that there's some additional thing that you think would be useful. In which case, like, I guess some specifics on what the project could look like. The, the way that the, basically it's supposed to be used, I don't even know if I've read all of the, the 12 pages. Basically, I see this as one page of notes, one page, like, of, this is, like, theoretically readable. Yeah, basically, this, this, is the only, this is the best part. Yeah, yeah exactly. Have and then, you guys and then this, this to deal with. And then this, is, this, 12, this is a 12 page appendix for this table. So then when you look at drug possession, and you're like, huh, 43 residents got charged with drug possession. What is what is that actually misdemeanor drug six possession, years? mind you? No, no felony. Yeah, six years. Mm -hmm. Then like what what were those charges and what was their severity? Then you can go through the through your appendix here basically and find what charge statutes were used and what the charge degree was. You know, I think what's key is about three quarters of those got charged more than once. Right. Uh, I mean, that, so that's where the information is. Right, and there's a, yeah, that's obviously on, this, on the first page for sure. You know, there, there's, there's I, I, probably I, in the same stuff. I, I, I would probably yes. look at having, for example, the officials go online. I probably would have this, just this one page right here, with a link to this if they want to look at even more of it. Yeah. Right. And rather than presenting it to the council, all of this, you know, the mind can only embrace what the seat can endure. <laughs> so you want to, you, the goal is is to get the data there, the information there, without overloading. Yeah. Am I correct? Yeah, so, for sure. Yeah, I mean, once again, this is, I just see this, I don't even know if I read this appendix, basically. I mean, if you want me to specific, I think probably it should be specifically if I this appendix. But I do think it's, it's universal. It's but, necessary. <laughs> because otherwise, I feel like my decision to put things in certain categories has like it's like too powerful because you're not actually able to see what I did there. Like, you know, well, I think too, this is this <laughs> could be really useful for your disparate effect on the four. You can look at it. No. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, 
And then, yeah, I mean, looking over time would be great. It's just how do you do that? Like, I mean, already, as you say, a lot of the things just have one. With, within some of the larger chart statutes, in theory, you could look at it. Or within some of the larger categories, you could look at it for sure, I guess. Is there some? I mean, if you were presenting this to council, you would say, yeah, I guess. OK, here's, here's our report, and these are the citations. This is what, um, going back to our charge, these are the types of citations of the Yellow Springs Police Department over a six year period. Yeah. Then what would you expect back from them? Or would you point out would you point out some issue related to what you found? Or you would just say, This is it, this describes it. Yeah, this is to answer the question what is the YSPD issuing the citations and warnings for? That's okay. all it yeah. does. Don't we have two council people? So what would you do with this? I mean, I, I guess it so would be useful maybe the last couple of years to maybe to just look at them separately, maybe. Um, well, I would suggest it'd be good to have a repository available someplace online these days is where those things live for supporting data, mm -hmm. you know, plus whatever other documentation would be a, uh, be a task force. And this would go in that pile. Um, I, you know, I would look at it and I would say, okay, interesting, and, right, and, yeah. so to me it would have to be correlated with an ask or an action or in support of something. So for example, if it's, <clears throat> let's say it's related to mayor's court. And you had other data that said, this is what went to mayor's court. You know, this is the total that went. This is what could have gone. Exactly. I mean, to me, as a standalone, it's, it's interesting, but not actionable. Right. So then I, my question is, OK, it, I mean, it, it fulfills the purpose. It's descriptive. Right. So what's the, what is the task force trying to do with this data? Like, what's the? What, what was the? Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was just the base, right? Right. I mean, part of it was because you know when you're looking at like, do you want to look at how they're handling license suspensions, for example? It's important to know like how many they're writing because they're only writing like one or two, and then like you necessarily want to like look at best practices. Mm -hmm. But um, so yeah, that was, yeah, that was like the one thing. There's no way but, of knowing but for sure, the if these are, are too many. If it's, it's I mean. It, Oh yeah, there's no, there's no, no basis for there's no, there's no It's not actionable, so that would be my concern. Oh yeah, it's absolutely. And I, I think I might even say, so why, you know, why would you spend your time doing it without having a? I think I a know, purpose. I, think, I can answer that. I, think, I think, <coughs> now as a scientist, I think the more data you have, the more information, the more, uh, the better it is. That you may not need it immediately, but it is valuable to have. The uh, but my, I would like that we just we accept this and send it to the council or do whatever we're going to do and then move on. I John started this before I teamed up with him and I'm anxious to move on to what I have heard the council asking for, what I think would be very valuable to the mayor's court to do data analysis that the, the council wanted to know what the trend was. So how did the data for citations for 2017 so with our new chief compared to the, the past time. It, uh, we can apparently can get the data that show where the citations have been sent to Mayor's Court or to, to Xenia. It would be very valuable to see how that trend has been for, uh, it would help give the data that would be uh, useful to the council uh, and to the mayor's court for what we got. So I'm anxious to move on to what I have heard the council asking for. I think the data that would help the mayor's court uh, mm -hmm. group and uh, and and uh, do some more analysis. Okay. So, so do we just hold this for now until yeah. it's relevant, well, or do we just actually, put it I'm into sorry. the package Jeff, and say this is some work? Jeff, um, I'm sorry. Yeah. So that process question is. Uh, I'll reach it, and it, it'll answer that. Like we're gonna, can can I just go through this? Is that okay? Yeah. Sure. Like you're asking no, a process question, but, it's, but I'll I'll cover it. Um, so uh, 
So a process question. So there were some disagreements regarding the process around the Wright State University Statistical Consulting Center report, and I feel like there's two primary um, areas of concern. Uh, the research design and the process for approving and releasing the report. So from now on, data analysis project will get its research designs approved by JSTF before doing any statistical testing. Um, hopefully this will lead to better research designs and will avoid creating any appearance that the methodology is being questioned because of discomfort with the results. Um, and I guess that means specifically like, things that are just count data, I don't feel like they're necessarily, like, it's not too heavy. So uh, I'm not saying that we would, not, like, I don't feel like this is, I don't feel like this has a research design, this is just count data. This is just, <laughs> this is just some information. Um, as you say, it's not even actual. Um, but like, in terms of like things like, well, what's the, like the like the Wright State University report, we would get that research. If we were to do that again, we would get that research design approved before um, before we would start doing the actual analysis. Um, and then for the second part of that, um, I'm basically asking, does JSTF <coughs> have any process for approving data analysis report project reports, or should the report simply be viewed as documents from the data analysis project? There is no reason for them to become JSTF approved reports. They just like exist, like other documents that are brought here. Um, and if the JSTF wishes to have an approval process, the only process is offered as an option. JSTF reviews the data analysis project reports for at least two meetings and then votes on whether or not to approve the report. How, how do people feel? It's obviously more time consuming to do the approval process. But if you guys want to do it, I'm totally neutral. Well, I'm not hearing you cry out for the approval process. Approving the data analysis, the research design makes sense to me. Yeah, yeah, we'll definitely and do then, that. As long as that's done, and I mean, I mean, I don't know how you feel, Al, but it seems to me like then we don't want to be, it seems a little odd to me that then we might not approve of the report. I mean, unless... And you guys can always complain about things. Anyway. Well, there's something that, there is something missing that it, towards the bottom. Okay, we're, this, we're, we approve this design, mm -hmm. uh, researching this. We get the report. Then it's the question of who's, where is this information going in terms of how it goes to council, the police department, and the public? And what are the formats and the occasions? platforms for getting that those reports out. I think we need some input about that. How how is it going to go out and to who and why and you know the follow up the sort of you need guidance from, from someplace else. The council is on the the guidance from, 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 guidance the from this or at least a discussion about how are we getting this out? How is this going out? The public seeing it, the council seeing it, the police. How's it being used? I mean, that's part of the research design too. How will this be used? Would that be decided up front? Would it be decided it be. up front? Because to me, that feels better than afterwards. Yeah. Than afterwards. Okay. Yeah. Because that feels like it's very clean. It's yeah. not. You're not reacting to sure. what the report, what has been what has been found out. Right. You're, you already had that decided up front. I think we're, yeah. I we're making it a little more complicated. It needs to be our output so far is a set of recommendations to council with supporting documentation and information. And we generate a lot of paperwork and ideas and information and thoughts. But what we're, when we finally put together, say, "Here, council, this is what we're saying." If that has something like this in it, then that becomes then part of the output. Otherwise, it's just part of the stuff you do to like. You want to get together at 10 or 11 kind of discussion that you know when you're having the meeting to talk about the report doesn't have to go into the report to council. So I would say it'd be better if we keep it simple. And the output that we give to council would include whatever supporting information uh, every that, that we think is important for the recommendation. Everything else, if somebody wants it, they can have it. But I, you know, we're going to end up with a massive pile of paperwork and data, I mean, which isn't connected to anything necessarily. Uh, and not be useful to anybody. And I don't want to have to do a whole lot of work to keep track of all that stuff, okay, okay. just in case somebody wants it. Yeah, I'm sorry. No, no. 
Yeah, I'm sorry, I shouldn't interrupt. Um, yeah, uh, I just want to say that it's, it takes more work to be brief. Like part of why, it's, you know, yeah, I mean, but I didn't have time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, so yeah, it's almost easier to just create endless piles of paperwork. But no one needs to keep track of them. They can just live on the internet. Then to like create summaries, like we can create them if people really want them. But they obviously, obviously, making summaries is actually harder. I, I'm still thinking about. Um, I guess I'm reacting in my head about troubles we bumped into in our last. That's, and, you know, there were troubles, first troubles were some of us not happy with what the report was reporting because it had errors or because it wasn't clear what we were talking about. And then that created some discomfort. And then pieces of it went out on Facebook, pieces of it went out different places, and then you know, there was public reaction to that. So, sort of like, how do we? Uh, as, a, as a task force, we would have to um, be, be, be behind whatever report is out there, right? It's going to be, we have to have ownership in that. We support it. As a task force, we have to say, Well, that's the question. We understand, we? we understand this report. We agree with, the, you know, we stand behind this report, and we agree with it, and we understand it. I mean, we, can, we can talk about it. We know what it says. So that sort of happens. That doesn't happen at the front end. It didn't, certainly didn't happen at the front end of our last reporting. I mean, I'm wondering, with Beth being out uh, with her knee, um, yeah. and I'm wondering, so, I mean, I, I keep coming back to the research design. We should, we, you know, we didn't exactly know what we were doing the last right. time around. Right, I know we're all so, learning. So, yeah, so now that we, have had that have had that experience. Um, this research design, I do feel like that's the time where we decide this is the purpose. You know, this is why we want you to do the research. Um, this is what we're going to do with it once we get the results, and and it goes forward like that. I mean, and as as long as these guys and they seem to barely know what they're doing. I mean, Alan, John, and Beth, those guys. You know, I think it's a strong. Yeah, no, work is strong work then um, you know then we can have confidence that it's going to be done confidently you know if they're doing it themselves or working with somebody else um, and so we should be able to know ahead of time how we're handling things I mean, it's, so there shouldn't be too well, let's, much let's running. hear from yeah. let's hear from everybody about this issue I'm about sorry. where we yeah, yeah I think it, the, it doesn't make sense to count the process the last time you know, was an example because that was short circuited and blew up. Uh, so we were in the process. We were in the process of saying we need to continue to find this and come up with something that we all understand and agree with. And mm -hmm. and then if we'd done that, there wouldn't have been an issue. But that didn't happen. So you know, we have a process in place. Let's make sure that we're all on board with this thing. We're going to sit. We're going to submit to the world and then submit it to the world. Now each one of those is going to be different because if you got a lot of data, it's one thing. If you got you know one page, of, you know then it's something else. But the same process of everybody talking about it, agreeing on it, and then releasing it, you know, is or should already be you know, no brainer in place. So I don't think we need to have anything more formal than that. Uh, what we need is to follow that. Okay. Kate, hey, did you want to say anything? No, I agree with that. I, I, I think they should just. And do you want it to be more formal? <clears throat> yeah, I think that was the point there. Just last time we didn't do it correctly, I think this time that we know what we're looking for. It should be, it should be a lot smoother the process. Well, yeah, I, uh, I agree with everyone, but I also think uh, if this is just for purposes of information or, again, I think the issue of actionable steps, you know, what, what, what could be taken. You know, there's the, the what. We have the what. Not a question, it's so what. <laughs> uh, and we, 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 we need to be able to, to answer that. So that's something, John, that you, that you have that you can, you can help us to kind of think through it. So this is something that was brought up at the 
where we were getting pointed out how to make it conspicuous too. Because uh, Beth was, was sort of expressing the same view. I don't, I don't know if you feel like I won this argument with the arguments ongoing. Um, I sort of argued that, uh, <laughs> that data analysis projects should not sort of politicize itself by looking at like making policy recommendations or anything like that, like we're just creating informative reports. Um, and that's like, it's for others to, it helps provide background for other people that want to develop a policy. John, but it also, John, John I got it now. Okay. okay. Because, it, it, because I agree. Okay. We've done this now, okay. So we can't say policy or whatever you want to do. Here's the data, here's the information. Yeah. Now it's here. It's in your hands. You guys run with it. Right. Yeah. Okay. Right. Absolutely. But there's real value in uh, in getting the data. It can be used by the police department to to for for the so the officers can see the data and see if they are 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 um, near the norm for the other officers. There can be. It's a way of self calibrating. And uh, if you don't have the data, there's no way to self-calibrate. And so I think there's real value to, and I think that the police officers I've talked to have been very interested in getting the data, of not maybe identifying the officer, but just so they can see <coughs> that they're following the pattern of for sending cases to mayor's court or whatever. So I think it's very valuable. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, move on to a uh, discussion of future analyses. Um, what does the JSA afford to gain from conducting data analysis? Um, what questions the future analyses answer? And uh, what are JSTF's goals for regarding data analysis? Um, these questions are sort of formed after. So what, what Beth wanted us to talk about, pretty open-ended. Yep. Well, as I said, the um, disparate impacts on the poor, that work is it's going to be helpful. Um, I think, you know, that there will be information, you know, that the data collection can do to help us with that work. Because we can understand what the impacts have been. And then, want to do it in a new way, you know, if the mayor's court, you know, if we want to be asking something of our police chief, police department, um, you know, that can impact, that can reduce that negative impact, it should help us to understand, we understand what the impacts have been. I'm sure there's other stuff, but... Yeah, is there anything else that people want us to look into? Um, so unfortunately, you know, I've been looking into what uh, data is available for analysis, but I still don't totally have it. Um, so you're trying to gather, you want to explain that, just, you're trying to understand what, yeah. what the officer... What all the data sets are that the YSPD controls that I can request from, uh, but yeah, I don't, that like exist in like a data set way where like it becomes this, an Excel file or something that can be question to Excel, um, and then be analyzed. I, I am still looking at that. Um, well, I think, I mean, Lisa, I don't know. I, I kind of so feel like we, we could just ask right. for that from the chief. I well, I, I'm just now, catch, I mean, I'm just coming up to speed with this commission. But, I mean, if I understand it, I mean, are just just randomly trying to collect and analyze any data you can get your hands on or is it is there a centering question a research question they're trying to ask or so yeah you know, I'm confused so I so, but that I'm new to this commission so yeah I'm sorry sort of why that paragraphs there is um because I felt bad about the open-ended question because I feel like part of what why it puts everyone at a disadvantage is because actually people don't know what's available to be analyzed so you don't know what questions are answerable um, uh, the way that I've been planning 
I'm trying to answer it. It's just get the handbook for the software suite that they use, and then it would explain everything that, in theory, you could do with it if they were using all of the different things that they can use to record with it. And then, and then learn what it is that they're actually, how they actually use the software. So but, but, but what is the problem that we're trying, what is the question that you're trying to answer with data, or the, or the problem, or the, what points are you trying to support with data? Right. I mean, as a, as a, like I, as a PhD, I, that's what I think of, you have a question. Right, yeah. No, and then you, or a hypothesis, or you have a, yeah, so I do have questions, and the, oh, we, do, we do actually have a follow-up study that we want to do, and that we would like to ask if it's okay if we, we go ahead and well, design that. I just want to okay. say something about that. We did have a charge from the task force, and it did say very clearly that we would um, research types of citations issued by the police department, the, path, the flow path of what happens. Oh, yeah. Uh, police policies and practices, what the officers do during their shifts, chains of commands, and so on, and the exercise and role of police officer discretion, and what types of cases are the police investigating. So there, I think the intent there was to make it more public, more transparent to the community uh, in particular, to say this, I mean, so it's descriptive, it isn't really that part of it is just descriptive. What are they doing? And, you know, and then you go to, why are they doing, for example, why are they giving more warnings to African American men in our community? That's, that's a bigger question. But that's a problem-oriented research question. Right. So we're sort, of, we're sort of fulfilling our charge with the work that's been done. Mm. Okay, thanks. That's, that's part of why it's useful. And, and what, the part of it that we haven't the dotted line that we haven't completed is how do we, what's the best way of informing the community? Because this was part of what this transparency is about. Right. How do we tell the community this is what it looks like, but this is what our police officers are doing. You know? right. and we can do that partly through, at one point we we're talking about stories, which can sometimes be much more powerful. I mean, if you talk about the fact that in the last year, probably in the last six months, our officers had to deal with X number of overdoses, for real, suicides, for real. I mean, the things that they actually have to do um, would be another part of that story of describing. Um, anyway, I think it's important to remember that we did, we're fulfilling a charge and we're pretty, we've done a good job of that. So. But isn't part of the question there, you know, in terms of being able to see what the software makes possible to gather, the information that it makes possible to gather, and then what, how, how is it being used? And that's the piece that if, if, if the committee, if the committee members who are trying to work on this are having trouble getting that information, I just think we should ask the chief for it. Because we are, we, what? I don't think that's necessary uh, yet. Okay. But. Thank you. Um, but if it is, I think that's what we should do. But yeah, it's Thank sort you. of like a if every if all you have is the, <coughs> it's the citation data set, then you know it's like they only tell you it's a hammer, then everything looks like a nail. So like you try to figure out what what are the what is the what are the data sets that are available. So, so. What I just want to be following a pretty good process in a in a roundabout kind of way. Yeah. And you you started out and took a lot of data on who got stuff for what when over a six year period. So put it together, did some analysis. The follow-up study, you know, has asked several questions. So you take a bunch of data and see what you've got. Figure out what the tools are, where the data are, and you're continuing to do that. This chart, I think, is also valuable. Both of those things then suggest other courses of action. So I think the thing to do is to continue seeing where the data takes you. And as more information comes up, um, do the same thing. I don't think there's much more that we can do or say about this. Okay, and then yeah, and then this follow-up study um, would would basically it would be looking at the same stuff that previous Red State University Statistical Consulting Center report looked at, um, but sort of these are my interpretation of sort of the feedback I got from the committee and from the council. It's sort of the question, you know, has there been a change over time since it, you're looking at six years? Um, is there a statistically significant difference between current and former officers? Because people were asking, you know, there's been a lot of turnover. 
and uh, where are the officers outliers relative to the rest of the department? And there's you know some policy implication to that if it's just a couple officers that are the problem versus is it you know systemic? Uh, and this would look at you know oh, it would include 2017 data. Include up to December 31st, 2017. Um, and so, uh, Dr. Tarpey had said that, you know, when we're ready, we can, we should kind of reach out to him to uh, see who's available to help us design this um, follow-up study. Uh, the director of the Red State Statistic, um, Statistics Department. Um, so, sh is it okay if we go ahead and, and design this, this study? Let's go to next. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Everybody, do we just pay him? No, for free. He is um, a Yellow Springs resident, and yeah, <coughs> he's doing this both both as somebody that just enjoys doing statistics and as um, you know just a citizen, he civic. Has, he has a personal interest. In he has a personal interest. Yeah. He's so, a good friend of real nice guy. Cool. Okay. Thank you. And so let's go on to the business, the idea of a police officer attending and updating. We have a little less time, but not too far. It's going to be good. So uh, let's start with Al. I think you brought up the police officer attending question. Oh, yeah, I mean, there's just in the course of this evening, it seems that if we had had someone from the police department here, they could have could have been valuable input. What would data would that would be valuable to them? Uh, uh, what kind of analysis would help help them uh, to uh, to be better? And uh, saying it comes up when when we have data when we're doing data analysis that there are all these uh, cases when where officers did not list the race uh, and so why did that happen? And then if we had had uh, someone who's a police officer to, to they could have answered the question very quickly. But uh, I think it seems strange that the Justice System Task Force should be, uh, should not have any input from any of, uh, other than when individuals meet with the chief or something. It seems to me there ought to be uh, some more involvement. Great idea. And then the police, the two officers I talked were very eager about it. And when also seemed sort of puzzled why they were not uh, one of this part of the group. Um, I will say when we started, um, we had made the decision not to ask uh, the chief to come or Patty because we wanted to get established. And sure. I think we've done a pretty good job of getting established. But um, I did have a recent conversation with the chief, and you know I'm sort of trying to imagine how they would participate here, um, and so that's a question. Um, so we're talking about the working groups. You know, I, I, you know, I'm not sure how they would participate. Maybe there would be some question they could answer. Although even in the example you give out about, you know, why are you, some people not marking race? I, I, I don't know that one officer being here would be able to necessarily answer that. Maybe they could, maybe they couldn't. Um, if different people are doing different things, um, it could be communicated back to them. We would have an interest, maybe. But um, so I guess that's the question: is um, you know what? It, it's not totally clear to me, but I'm not. So that's just that's my comment. I didn't mean to suggest they should stay the whole time. It okay. just seemed that. Uh, the, the, and one of the officers said if the, the, the officer on duty Tuesday night could be could be it's part of their time, and work time, could be to just come in for 15, 20 minutes and... Well, I mean, RC invited cops to come and speak to, uh, to HRC for the public and basically the only ones that would come were ones who we're going to be working because they have to get paid regardless just for being here. Mm -hmm. And so they basically were like, well, let's just get ones who are working and stop in for a second. And mm -hmm. I, I just, you weren't able to get someone to just sit. They wouldn't just come and kind of come and speak. It was kind of a, it became a gesture. 
that the police were doing a paid thing. It, mm -hmm. So the, I'm just saying that it right. turned into something else when we really wanted it to be right. much less that. And I, I have a feeling that we end up being the exact same thing. Like, oh, okay, so we're fine. I'll make sure to take that shift and I'll get a few extra bucks to it. And that's ended up what was happening. So I, I we've, have you tried it before, but I mean, we could try it again. But I, I have a feeling we'll end up. Were you expecting them to perform a particular function or just be there? No, they would give a, they'd speak, but it was candid. It was all about, you know, we had questions for them. What they do, where you go to church, sports teams, you like, you know, like really non police rated. Um, and, you know, we asked them not to come in uniform, but like I said, once they saw seven o'clock, it was a, well, it's round shift change. People are either going to have to stay longer, we pay extra for that. So they're like, we're not sending any of them. So since it's the start of the shift, we'll just allow that to be the beginning of their shift and, and so it, it became they were just here in uniform mm -hmm. not being able to candidly speak at all and so I just want to feel like we went into the same world. The only thing I hear about what you're saying you know they know we're meeting and they're kind of wondering well, what are they talking about maybe you know uh, and feeling a little weird about it and so maybe there's some way of communicating that maybe it's more about meeting with them at a staff meeting once a month and say this is what we're working on. Do you think that would solve the, maybe that would, I don't know. Well, I think it makes sense to involve them if they want to be involved. I think the justice system includes the police. Uh, you know, our charter is to look at the justice system, which goes out past Mars as far as I'm concerned. So it's logical and reasonable to try and you know, talk to them. They're express, some of them are expressing some interest. Maybe approach Chief Hale and have, or from Carlson and approach it with him, asking the question that you're asking to. Just a thought, maybe since this, you know, we're doing these plans, maybe each work, working group could be asked if they could attend the staff meeting to present their plans the way we've just done tonight, and maybe in a more concise manner, sure. <laughs> say, you know, uh, this is our working group, sure. and this is what we hope to be working on this year. Fifteen minutes of their, right. you know, I think that would be a communication, you know. I think it would just, if you're going to invite an officer in, having been part of that, oh. it would be good to give them something to talk about. We'd like you for you to come and talk about this. And you just have to come in to just kind of just talk. I think they're going to look at, you know, this was, you know, what's that all about? The value of time and everything. But if you give them something, we'd like for you to uh, discuss this for a few minutes and if possible make, make time for a question or two and leave it to that so that it's not open up to anything else. Right. So they will open them up to something else. Yeah. I mean, just that, that little focus topic, and then give them 10, 15 minutes, and let them go. And let them go, let, let, them, let them do it right at the top. Right at the top, right after you give them the <coughs> yeah, So, I guess, you know, I think from perspective of, um, you know, cynical community members, uh, the concern would be that, um, of, you know, not that anyone's proposing this, but like, you know, say, taking it to the maximalist position and having like a, a cop be like on the task force, just lay aside something work for the whole meeting, would be that, you know, the committee would begin identifying with the officers, sort of, um, almost seeing themselves as a, as a branch of the department. And like, uh, obviously, that would be uh, not good for our uh, appearance of neutrality. Um, and so, to me, you know, if we're having an officer here, like, that should be for like a specific purpose, like we should have like, specific questions. But whenever I have specific questions, usually I don't want to wait until the meeting to have them answered, so I just ask them. 
<laughs> like, I don't, I don't know. I mean, like, I don't know if the other people are having difficulty getting their questions answered between meetings, but like, I don't, I, I'll, I, 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 I asked Carlson because I want to like take up his time, like, who should I work with to like get my questions answered? And he was like, Sergeant Nat. I was like, great. So Sergeant Nat, and we just email back and forth whenever I have questions, and it, it works fine for me. Um, and in terms of the question of like, why are, why was all this race data missing? Like I, I said. As I told you guys when I was presenting it, like I asked Hale and also Carlson, like they both gave me the same answer and they kind of presented it. So like yes, an officer could have also maybe given a different answer than the chiefs gave. And that's also part of the question is are we having an officer here representing themselves or are they representing the department? Not that I think it should be one way or the other. I'm just asking what people want. Well, I think you can give them the topic ahead of time and then they get clearance from from the chief or whoever. So yeah. whoever. That would both better. Yeah. If we have a topic that would work. Well, I think, I think then before we do, we invite him and we should have a topic rather yeah. than saying right. yeah. just yeah. off the cuff. Yeah. Okay. Well, our, our time is up and we would have one more thing, which is about packets. And so this question about the issue of neutrality versus, you know, too close of an identity or whatever with uh, the police department. I mean, I'm wondering if we should kind of think about it and bring this back for next meeting. Kind of oh, think about that. But, I, but I do want to say. Wait, wait, oh, it's five after nine, so um, I think we should move on and then people think about it and then we can talk about it the next meeting. Okay. And uh, Pat. Uh, yeah, this, this will be really Pat. fast. Um, okay. Um, we create a packet for the meeting. We have a leadership team, it's Judith, Ellis, and me. We trade off facilitating. And the facilitator, in theory, is creating the packet. And first, they're making sure that the agenda gets into the paper. That's one important part of our communication with the public. And that, has, that means that has to get to Judy in time for her to put it into the paper preceding our week. And then, so she would have to have it the Monday. Well, anyway, there's detail to that. She's a little the Monday, Monday before. before. Yeah, more Monday. Yeah. And then she is uh, really great about creating the packet and uh, putting it on the web. It's on the web now, so people can it. And she also is happy to print it. But she did tell me I did the packet last time because Ellis was sick. You and I'm not facilitating. And. Um, she did say that uh, other commissions, pretty much one person, usually a chairperson, would create a packet and give it to her. And she wasn't so happy with having individuals, which is something we've done in the past. And um, it wasn't your fault, it was my fault, because I said you could send it to her later. I don't know what I said, but I basically <laughs> said you don't have to give it to me. So instead of me collecting everything, which I tried to do, I was bugging Steve for two minutes, and he was. He, he came through, but <laughs> you didn't quite finish, and I said, oh, that's not a problem, but actually it's kind of a problem. So in the, in the future, let's try and we have to get the packet the Friday before the Tuesday of the meeting. So if you have something you want everybody to see, it has to be given to whoever is collecting the packet to give to Judy. It would probably be on Thursday, because you're giving it to Judy on Friday, the Thursday before the Tuesday. And then if that doesn't happen, you have to take care of them in your own copies of people. And it won't get on the web. Is there a way to plug it If you really want something to come to this meeting, you have to make sure whichever facilitator is making the packet, they have to have it the Thursday before the Tuesday. The Tuesday? The Thursday before the Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah, and it's it is great to get the stuff ahead of time. Yeah, people have been really doing great. a great job with it, and yeah. so but and so it, we can be a little cleaner about it. It's on the web, so the public, if they have any interest, they go, oh, that's going to be talked about. Well, let's look at the. Why don't we look at the agenda for next, next time? Um, and so that, I mean, we're going to be our, our working groups. I mean, we're going to follow basically this agenda. Uh, but I just, I don't know if the police working group, 
report. So just bring, you know, if there's and if there's any actionable items, the same with the mayor's court. Um, I'm going to be, we'll be reporting, Al and I, whatever, on the new policy projects, um, the data group. And then this issue about the police officers attending or maybe communicating at a staff, their staff meeting so they know what we're doing. I'm thinking, you know, why don't I talk with the chief, also sort of get his thoughts on this, and, you know, thinking about what everybody said about this, and let's try to think about whether we want to invite someone from time to time, what they would, what would, you know, what sort of subjects we'd have them speak on, or how we want, if we want to do that, or and if we do how. And where okay. are the packets online? Say it again? Where, where are the packets online? The village works. Yeah, the document center. Mm -hmm. www. So. It's on the front, on the front page. There's a thing there that says I forget what it says. It doesn't say documents, but so it's the document center home. Yeah. No. That's it. Okay. Yeah, that is what it says. It's on the front, right page, on the front page, and you yeah. click on it, and there's a whole list of things. There's council packet, housing needs assessments mm -hmm. there, all that stuff is there. Yeah. I look under department division and like arts and culture commission, and I don't see. Look under just yso.com. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, he's right there. Under latest news. Latest news. It's under latest news. That's what it is. View all news. Isn't that what it's under? That's up. That's under latest news. It's breaking news. news. It's the third news. one down. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. Click on it. The bunch of yeah. under latest news right there. Okay. And and I don't uh, know what the packets are. I guess one. There's one other quick thing is that we do end up on YouTube. So <laughs> each of these things. But I don't know. Yeah, we just post to YouTube. Well, I thought it was a great meeting. Right? I said I think it would have been a good time. Hi, Richard. I move over. Pleasure to meet you. Second. Second. I was using it. I just had it.